All right, Glyph Gamer Group tutorial take two. My camera died, so we're trying it with my phone now. Um, so what I've got here is I have Jake and Nate, who are my guinea pigs. They're the rest of the group, people can say hi, hello. Um, we're just going to do a quick um, setup and the first couple rounds, just so people can get a better sense of Glyph in its glory. What we have here set up are the three types of champions. You have your guardians, you have your adherents, and you have your strikers. So what we'll do is at the start of the game, each player will take turns drafting a champion of their choice. You must draft one of each class. And once we do that, we will move on to the next phase. So we'll start with Nate. Go ahead and pick one of the champions of your choosing. I'm going to take the fire guard. Okay. He is taking the fire guard. Jake, you may pick. And you don't have to pick the one on top, obviously. You can go through them and decide which ones you want to choose I from. Go with the barbarian. Barbarian. Okay. Nate? Priestess. Priestess. Okay, Jake. I'm go with the stone golem. Stone golem, good choice. And Nate, last pick. Go with the assassin. Going with the assassin. Okay. And Jake. It's hard to see, but he's got choices between the warlord and the adept. I think I'll go with Warlord. Warlord. Perfect. Okay. Once players have chosen, the remaining champions get taken out of the game. They will not be used. And now, what you'll do is you will create your champion boards. On each board, you're going to have their starting health, the amount of armor and energy that they start off with, as well as grab the starting dice for your champion. So go ahead and take from the, st the stocks the different items that you need and we'll pause here until they get that set up. Okay, so now we can see we have our champions with their starting cubes and dice. So you can see some champions like the stone golem start off with three armor whereas the priestess starts off with no armor. So what we will do now is players take turns activating a champion at a time. For the first activation, players get to use all five of their starting dice. In subsequent rounds, players get a default of three dice, which they can then increase by using their energy cubes. The last thing is items. Forgive us, these are prototype components. Not all the artwork is done. Round one, we have three items. You can see them, they're upside down, but we have, and the glare is kind of bad. We have a Tome of Riches, a Tome of Protection, and a Tome of Zeal. It's a lot of tomes right off the bat. These tomes have no activation or no purchase cost, so it's blank, and they give you the die that's showing in the bottom right corner. In the Tome of Riches, it gives you one gold die. So, initiative token is with Nate. He will start first, so he will choose the champion he wishes to activate. I'm going to go with Assassin. Okay. So Nate now looks to see which dice he rolled, which glyphs he rolled. Looks at his abilities. And then makes a decision on what he would like to save, put aside, 
and which dice you would like to re-roll. All right, so I'm just going to do a basic attack against the barbarian. barbarian. Okay, so to perform an attack, you match the basic attacks are done with the uh, Glyph of War against the champion's current armor. So in this case, two beats zero. Therefore, the Barbarian takes one damage. Damage gets returned to the general stock. The dice get moved to his uh, inactive dice pool. Still can do that, right? Uh, yep, a leftover energy. Uh, a glyph of power can be placed into an energy slot, provided there is a space to be used at a future time. The advantage of this is having an extra energy. The disadvantage is that die is now being occupied. It cannot be activated to roll on his next activation. In addition, Nate rolled two, two glyphs of wealth, which he can then use to draw up to two cards of his choice. You can take those two. Toma Zeal and the Toma Protection. So a blue dice and a green dice. So with Tomes, they are instant use cards. They get discarded, and he gains the benefit of those dice, so he gets one green and one blue, which then get added to that champion's dice pool, which gets placed underneath to use in a future activation. The champion has now gone. So it receives an activation token to place on the champion to signify it has gone. And now play goes to Jake. Jake can choose any of the three champions he wishes uh, and be able to two. attack or perform various abilities. Yeah, barbarian. Okay. Uh, let's see. So go ahead and roll your dice. He's going to see what he got, look at his abilities, something that he wants to try to go for, or possibly some secondary actions, like he's got some glyphs of wealth that he'll be able to draw new cards. Speaking, excuse me, speaking of which, once uh, Nate finishes his activation, new cards are added for purchase. Barbarian's a unique character in that he doesn't have three combo abilities. His first ability, you can see, despite the glare, is he has a Berserker Rage ability, which if he has been damaged the prior round, he can add two War Glyphs to his uh, roll results um, as a free action. The only cost is the one energy. So uh, Jake has that in mind, he will be able to use because he did take a damage prior to his activation. Okay. So, so War Glyphs are the pluses. In fact, let me grab my sword. super fancy rule book here. Use this as a reference guide. Okay. So to activate that, I would need to do. Right. So what Jake's got here, even energy. though his energy is currently only one, he is able to use a glyph of power to substitute for an activation cost when needed. So what he's got is. In essence, three energy, the one stored, plus his two glyphs of power, which allows him to perform his Berserker Rage and then 
perform his heavy strike with what he currently has rolled. Okay, so how do I activate? Can I those use... two. Mm -hmm. Those two are energy glyphs. Okay, so, so I can activate yep. with that. Which gives can... you... So it gives me that, so now I mm -hmm. can... Because the Berserker's Rage is going to give you an essence. These two plus one war glyphs, which you're, is what you're using in there, in essence. Okay. So I, too, then perform basic attack against the same target. So the heavy strike reduces a single target's armor by two. So, for example, the fire guard has two armor. So you're reducing it by two. So in SNC now has zero armor. And then okay. you perform a basic attack against that target. Okay, so what's the... So your basic attack would be using those two. Using these? Mm-hmm. Against him. So zero. So take two... He would take two damage? He would take uh, one damage. One damage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, basic attack always does one damage, okay. regardless of how many leftover war glyphs you have. Okay. So, so the fire guard takes two damage. The two tokens get returned to the stock. Then you have two glyphs of wealth, wealth. which you can then draw so, two cards. We have an ornate helm, which will give you two green dice when you have it equipped in an armor slot. And the old broadsword gives you two red dice when equipped in a weapon slot. Barbarian has three slots. All champions come with three item slots, a weapon slot, an armor slot, and an auxiliary slot. In addition, they have two stash slots which may be used to store more advanced cards that have... And what was the cost on it again? So no. cost is the top left. So in this case, these are basic items, so there is no cost. Oh. So they are free cards to take. Well, then I will take those two. Okay. Will give me... So you'll put them, you'll equip them on your champion. So armor... And weapon. weapon. Perfect. Okay. And now while those cards are equipped, you gain the benefit of those cards. So you'll put two red dice on the sword, two green dice on the helm, and those you'll be able to use in future activations. Okay. The dice you used for your activation then move down here to your inactive pool. You will grab a token, signifying that character has gone, like so. And then play moves over to Nate. Play like this will continue as each champion performs their actions until all three champions of each player have gone. And then we will, con we will continue with the cleanup phase at the end of each round. All right, and we're back. We had the Warlord go. Warlord performed his War Drums ability, which gave all three of Jake's champions plus one War Glyph until the end of next round. And Jake also purchased the Tome of Riches, which gave his Warlord an additional gold die to use on future activations. Um, so I am going to cast Blinding Light, which reduces Warp Lifts of all enemies by one oh, until so the end of the next round. Nate, with his Priestess, is able to perform his Blinding Light ability, which unfortunately negates the Warlord's War Drums. Unfortunate turn of events. So all three of those get trashed. 
Very good. All right, Nate is up. He's got his stone golem left. Several defense glyphs, which is very nice. He can use his glyph of. He can actually do the arcane. He'll do the second one. What do you got? To do his boulder smash ability. Boulder smash is a very powerful. I don't have the sword. The glyph of arcana is a wild. It can mimic any glyph. Glyph of Arcana right here. And the Stone Golem does start off with a lot of armor, but has very low health and very low energy. So the key to playing the Stone Golem is knowing when to use your abilities. Perfect. As you can see here, he rolled a double with his green die, a double glyph of defense, which allows him to occupy the space of two for that combo. And now he performs the ability. Okay, so it's boulder smash, basic attack against all enemies. You need that take damage or considered unarmored until the end of next round. Alright, so what we have here is a basic attack using, this is actually pretty fortuitous for you, you have your one wild, which is standing in as a glyph of war, so you have one glyph of war against all of his targets. Fortunately, two of his targets are currently unarmed, which means they both, oh no, sorry, the priestess does have one Cliff occupying an armor slot. I missed that. So that gets taken away. The assassin does take a damage. And then the fire guard loses one of its stored defense cliffs. The assassin does suffer the effect. This is this fancy token there showing that he is now unarmed? Unarmored, I mean, yeah. until the end, of next round. the end of next round, correct. Very good. You have one draw. Sure, I will take this one. Oh, yeah. All right, we will continue with this. Got out of space on my phone. Yeah, they are. So he drew his rod of spirit, which gives him two blue dice. I'm also excited to watch. Which he has added. The stone golem has gone. So all three champions have gone. So now what we do is the cleanup phase. All cards that were not purchased get discarded. New cards take the space. Starting on round two, four cards become available. And on round three, five cards become available. After round three, it always remains with five cards. In addition, each champion gains one energy cube to add to their stock or to their player's track. So you have three energy cubes, one for each. You remove all activation tokens. Perfect. Uh, yeah, all three. Uh huh. Okay, so Yes, so what that is showing is he starts with one energy but has space for up to four. Play then gets passed, the initiative token gets passed to the other player, in this case Jake, and then Jake will be starting this second round. 
to begin the second round, what you do, sorry, keep those there, is what's different from the first round is the second round you perform a replenish phase. Each champion has a default of three dice, which can be placed up here free of cost. So you can choose any three of your available dice to put up there. Like any of those. Yep. Perfect. In addition, you can spend one energy from your energy stock to recruit two additional dice. For every energy spent, you can recruit two dice up to a maximum of 10 active dice up top. Would you like to spend energy to activate two more? We'll do one energy. Okay, so draw two more. Perfect. So now the Barbarian will perform his action, rolling the dice that are active, so those five dice. The play will continue on through each champion again as the prior round. Thank you for watching. Hope this helps clarify some things, and I will talk to you later. A lot of work left.